using an infrared camera. This is only a small section of the Milky Way, our own galaxy. Each dot represents a sun, and orbiting many of those suns will be planets. There are about a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, and there are at least that many galaxies in our universe. This is an actual human brain. There are as many neurons in this one brain as there are stars in our galaxy. We have more than any other animal on Earth and is the reason why we occupy the position we do relative to all other living creatures. Despite generating much scientific interest over the centuries, it's only more recently that inroads are being made that enable scientists to understand relationships between the structures and functions of the brain. Its demands on our body are disproportionately high. Though 2% of the body's mass, it uses 20% of our body's oxygen. The brain needs more glucose than any other organ in the body. In the first part of our study of the brain, we shall look at the subdivisions of the brain. There are three basic regions. The hindbrain, which contains the cerebellum, which means little brain, it's where the unconscious coordination of posture and reflexes and body movement and fine motor skills occur. The medulla oblongata, which is labeled B, controls autonomic responses like heart rate and breathing rate. Label C there is the pons, the relay center for coordinating the two halves of the brain. The midbrain, D, relays auditory and visual information between the fore and hind brains. In the forebrain, E, the thalamus, is referred to as the great relay station. It makes connections between the forebrain and the hindbrain and the sensory system and cerebellum. F is the hypothalamus, the link between the nervous system and the endocrine system, responsible for basic drives and emotions. And G is the cerebrum, four-fifths of the brain maths. Made up of two hemispheres, it interprets and controls response to sensory information. It has centers for intellect, memory, consciousness, and language. Let's have a look at the meninges. Three layers of tough elastic tissue between the arachnoid and pia mater circulates the cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid acts as a shock absorber by cushioning the brain, and it carries some nutrients and waste to and from the central nervous system. Cerebrospinal fluid can be used medically to transport dyes and medications. Interestingly, contrast dyes injected into the circulatory system changes all organs except for the brain. This is due to the blood-brain barrier. It works because the capillaries in the brain have tightly fused cells preventing the usual diffusion of materials across their walls. This limits the movement of undesirable substances into the brain. Non-lipids, like oxygen and glucose, require special transport mechanisms to move these important particles into the brain. Since like dissolves like, lipids have an easier time negotiating the lipid bilayer of the blood-brain barrier, and many pass through. Like caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, heroin. If you're going to develop drugs to treat brain disorders, they better be lipid-soluble. Myelinated axons, white matter, exist on the outside, opposite to the spinal cord. The white matter is on the inside. Unmyelinated axons, the gray matter, is on the outside, also known as the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is responsible for speech, memory, personality, and reasoning skills. The cerebral cortex is fissured to increase surface area. Relative to a smooth stuff, the convolutions and fissures increase the surface area to about the size of an open newspaper.
The hemispheres are separated by a bundle of white matter called the corpus callosum, which is labeled E in this picture, enabling the two halves of the brain to communicate. To prevent the spread of the electrical hyperactivity associated with epilepsy from one side of the brain to the other, the hemispheres can be surgically isolated by cutting the corpus callosum. You've heard about people being left brain thinkers and right brain thinkers. Increasing research seems to indicate one hemisphere is more dominant than the other. Generally, the right hemisphere is associated with visual spatial skills holistic and intuitive thinking. Left hemisphere is associated with linguistic and mathematical skills and segmental and sequential and logical ways of thinking. This is a photograph I took of an English teacher's desk. A right brain thinker perhaps? Holistically organized? This is my desk. Note the angles of the objects, almost mathematical. Perhaps I'm a left brain thinker. Another English teacher. Even the water bottle sits askew. A math teacher's desk. Say no more. This slide demonstrates the Stroop effect. Try to say the actual colors rather than the words. Perhaps one side of the brain dominates word recognition and the other color recognition. In reality, naming colors takes longer when the word is written in an incongruent color. John Stroop published the effect in 1935 and is one of the most cited papers in experimental psychology. The test has been modified to be timed to investigate brain damage, dementias, neurodegenerative diseases, ADHD, schizophrenia, addictions, and depression. So the corpus callosum, the nerve tract that joins the two hemispheres. Each hemisphere is divided into four lobes, each associated with different function. Let's have a look at the cerebrum in more detail here. In the top left, we can see the Broca's area. It's named after Paul Broca, who reported on two patients who had lost the ability to speak after injury to the posterior inferior frontal gyrus, a ridge on the cerebral cortex of the brain. On the bottom left, we can see the Wernicke's area is the part of the cerebral cortex linked to speech. Wernicke's aphasia, thought to affect this area, whereas it actually doesn't, is a condition that affects language comprehension. Speech and articulation is fine, but gibberish. The occipital lobe receives and analyzes visual information. Stimulated by electricity, people can see lights. Injured, people can see things, but not recognize them. The temporal lobes is where visual and mainly auditory processing occurs. Understanding and recalling conversations is performed here. The parietal lobes receives and processes sensory information from the skin. The sizes of the areas of the parietal lobes devoted to sensory input is proportional to the numbers of sensory receptors in that area of the body. This model shows the areas of the body with their relative proportions of sensory receptors on the skin. Canadian Nobel Prize laureate Wilder Penfield performed many tests on conscious people's brains by electrically stimulating them. The patients are conscious because there's no pain receptors in the brain. One person thought he could hear music playing when Penfield probed an area of the cortex associated with memory sequences. Years ago, Phineas Gage, a mild-mannered railroad worker, had a meter-long iron bar impaled into a skull after an explosion he caused by tapping blasting caps with said iron bar. His injury not only didn't kill him, but changed his personality to an irresponsible, short-tempered man who would spontaneously burst into fits of profanity. The frontal lobes are associated with reasoning, language, memory, personality, and voluntary motor function.
Similar to the sensory areas of the parietal lobes, the proportion of motor areas devoted to a particular part of the body correlates to the degree of complexity of movement that body structure can make. This map of the motor cortex doesn't show the disproportionate amount of motor area devoted to certain body parts, while the stylized picture of the person does. The hindbrain. The cerebellum controls limb movements, balance, and muscle tone. It's the largest section of the hindbrain. Muscle tone uh, is, means coordination of posture. The pons, which means bridge, relays information between the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. And the medulla oblongata controls involuntary muscle action and is a coordinating center of the autonomic nervous system. That means it regulates breathing, heart rate, diameter of blood vessels, certain digestive properties like peristalsis and swallowing. The midbrain receives specific sensory information and connects the hindbrain to the forebrain. And the forebrain has the thalamus, the relay station for directing sensory information to appropriate parts of the cerebrum. Also in the forebrain is the hypothalamus. It contains the bulk of the body's internal equilibrium and is the interface between the nervous and endocrine systems. It also controls drives like thirst, hunger, and sexual desire. 